Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we are going to talk about how to create an archive page. Now, what is an archive page? So archive page basically helps you list down the posts and you can categorize them by taxonomies, let's say categories or tags or even your custom taxonomies. So archive pages are basically used to organize the list of posts by the post type or the taxonomies such as categories, tags, or even your custom taxonomies. So for instance, if you go to a post, we have categories. And let's say we have a category called games. Uh, it has a name, description, and a slug. And if you go to all posts, you can see that there are certain posts that have been assigned to this particular category. Like you can actually go over here and assign like so. So these posts fall under the category of games. Now one post can also belong to multiple categories, but that's another discussion. So as you can see, there are 20 of them. If you click on this count, 20, then you'll see that these are all the posts that are under this taxonomy term called game. So, so how do we show all the posts that belongs to games category only? Now, if you take a look at template hierarchy, which we have discussed in the past videos in depth, so I'll be keeping this brief. You can see that there are different archives that are available, right? You can see this is the archive page. There is author archive, category archive, custom post type archive, custom taxonomy archive, date and tag archive. So we will discuss about each one of them. We're starting with the category archive. So it follows this hierarchy. Uh, if you want to have a separate template for a particular term, let's say for games, you would like to have a different template then you could probably use category slash games dot php and if you create this file in wordpress themes root directory then it's going to serve the content for that particular term if you want to use a specific id then you can use the id over here but if you would like to have all of the terms of the categories uh, in general you can go ahead and use category dot php now in case you would like to keep the template for all of these archive, let's say author, category, archive, custom post type, taxonomy, date, tag, if you'd like to keep them the same, then you can just use archive.php. You can see that this is like a fallback. It, it follows this path. So it's coming from here. It'll look for that file. Didn't find it. Didn't find it. Didn't find it. Look for archive.php. Okay, so if it exists, brilliant. If it doesn't, then it'll again fall back to index.php. So index.php is like a fallback to all kinds of templates. But like I said, we want our archive page to probably look differently or you know, you wanna style it differently. It's completely up to you. I'm only showing it to you. Like I said, this is not a CSS tutorial, but just to let you know how, how will you create a separate one. So what you could do is you could create archive.php. So inside of my theme, I have already created archive.php and as you can see that this is inside of the root directory. And I'm going to paste the code over here uh, for this template and then this code will be available uh, onto the GitHub repository, which is imranitsayat slash Aquila. And you can go and grab it from there. So I'm just gonna paste it. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna paste it here. Okay, so let's start from the top. So inside of this archive.php, we just have some comments. We have get header. This is the standard div element with container. Now this is where I like you to look at. So this is the page header. Of course, if you have a category called games, it'll have a description and name. We can display that because we like the user to know that they are on the archive page uh, of games. So that's why if you want to display the name of that, what you could do is you can first check if the title exists. If it exists, then you can go ahead and print this out. I can't imagine the time when the title wouldn't exist, but I'm just showing you that in case if you want to check any condition, you can do that. So what does this function do? Single term title. So you can see that this basically displays or retrieves the page title of the taxonomy term archive. So in this case, games, and it checks uh, if you want to add any prefix, like what to dis display before the title, you can put that over here. If you want to display it, like echo it out, then set this to true, which is by default. But if you don't, then set this to false. So I'm setting this to false because I'm only checking if this particular title exists or not. If it does, then go ahead and print it out. So you have your h1 and then I'm calling the same function. Um, 
to basically uh, display the title okay over here you get the description so in case if the description exists i'd like to show it uh, i don't want an empty div like that in case if the user has not uh, added the description so if you edit it this way you can add the description and it's going to show over here using the archive description function okay then we come down this is where you just rendering your post content uh, and then we are using our pagination function which i've already discussed in the previous episodes it's basically just using the paginate link function under under the hood which is basically our wordpress default function just passing our specific arguments so we keep our own styles and classes as per our own needs okay so just like a wrapper function uh which wraps the paginate links function okay so that's that that's for pagination and this is going to render our content template which is basically this and then this in case if the content is not available it's going to render our content non template okay so that's basically that's what's happening here uh, if you go back now to categories and if you click on view it's going to take you to the archive page and notice the url at the left bottom of the screen says categories slash games click on that there you go this is the one and you can see that's the name of the category that's a description and then you have all of the posts listed down here which belong to that particular category. You can also go to the next page. You have a pagination coming from here. And if you click on the page two, you notice the URL over here. So category slash game slash page slash two. So it's going to display the rest of the posts. And that's all there is. So it'll go back to the page one. Okay, so now if you want to, I think it's looking too big. So let's just shrink it down. Probably we can use a bootstrap classes um uh, so i have already put row now we need to pass the bootstrap classes which are basically these classes to my content uh one way to do it so that when other templates are using where we don't want to pass this class you can pass it conditionally so what we can do is we can pass an argument so next argument is just a slug and then this argument basically takes uh, whatever arguments you want to pass to that particular template. So in case we can say container classes and then pass your own class, which is this in the, in the which is this. Okay, let's paste it here. And then inside of that, we can just say container classes equals if not empty args container classes if it if it does exist then set the value to that otherwise keep it margin bottom five which is by default okay all right and we can go ahead and use that here and that's just going to ensure that we have all our post classes rendered plus the additional classes that we want to render. Okay, now if you go back and check, if you go back and check, refresh, there you go, congratulations. So you've got all of the posts listed in the grid format. And if you do an inspect element, you'll notice that you have got your, you've got your site gone, you've got your row, and then inside of that, basically you've got your articles and notice all of these classes have been added since we had created them, okay? You got all of these posts. You can just you can create your own uh, design if you want. You know you have the control over this template and you can do it yourself. Okay. Awesome. Uh, now in the next video we are going to learn about how to control the number of articles we want to display on this particular page. And of course, uh, there will be a scenario where your client wants you to display only six posts or just seven posts per page. So how do we control that? Okay. How do we change that basis the page template? Okay, so we're going to learn that in the next video. All right, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Uh, do start my repository to support my work. And thanks to all the 463 people to start my repository. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech, And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.